Eager Beaver. It's 8.59 and 43 seconds, and I have already started live streaming because I was setting it up to start, and I just went ahead and clicked go live without even thinking about it. <clears throat> so I apologize for being early. <laughs> Get an audio check being here. Early. There we go. Got audio. Pop out chat. I and though let's see, I've got a pinned comment. You know what, Bo? No, before I go to that, I gotta I gotta go over here and start with first things first. I have an email here that says Tony sent you an Amazon gift card. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. $125. Wow. Apply to your Amazon account. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna try this again. I've been trying this to make sure. I, I think the last couple times I did this, it's completely safe for me to just click through this and show you how it goes. Again, um, apply to your Amazon account. Yeah, there's a $125 gift card. I hope you enjoy this. Amazon gift card is the message that he put into it. And then I click apply to your Amazon account. And my finger's on the button. And nope, not good. So a new gift card balance, 213.24. And thank you once again, Tony. Very, very much appreciate that. And I've got a couple of other uh, emails stored here in my folder to talk about, but I'll go interact with chat first. I have a pinned comment up here, Ken Stout Live from 9.47 p.m. And I know if I pin a comment, the first comment that I see, then it will stick. And you all, all of y'all, all of you all, <laughs> We'll see it. So it says he was first, but he was not claiming to be first. But he says, I as well, I guess as well as somebody else, or maybe because he is feeling out well and healthy, I as well, hmm, have a question. I am suspect, suspect, I am suspect, I am suspect, I am Groot, you could see saying, I am a place, person, or thing as a noun. So here is, that sounds like a noun, but no, that's not fitting. I am sus maybe suspicious. I am suspicious of this Tim person claiming not to be Tim Stout. So Ken is convinced the correct name is Tim Stout. So is Ken Stout Live the Tim person who's... Claiming not to be Tim St I'm confused. The thing I'm suspicious of is that Ken Stout Live claims English is his first language and that he's a native English speaker. I guess that doesn't necessarily mean he's fluent in English, being able to express himself well in words, because I yeah, I'm not quite I'm not quite getting that. <clears throat> And a disclaimer for those who don't know, Tim Stout and I tip pick on each other and we are the butt of each other's jokes. He's the only one that I make the butt of my joke. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Nick Poverman, I received my paycheck in the mail. Now, when I read this and the envelope was full of parsley, I, when I saw this on the screen, the next phrase was on the next line. So I didn't see it yet. And I thought, where in the world is he going with this? How is he going to pull a joke? Out of the envelope was full of parsley. Yeah, my wages have been garnished. All right, good. John Williams says, Jenny is so clever. That would be a reference to the trader that was shown before the show. Good morning, everyone, and to you, Doug, LOL. <clears throat> Mike Wojcik, hello. Tim Sal, hello. Mike Wojcik, did you get your full moon photos? Was he taking pe photos of people mooning? Um... No, I know what that was. We had a full moon last night. He wanted to go out and take photos of it. William Dawson, hello, Alice, hello. Ran Israel, Seldon Ball gives us his weather reports of E. Menorah, Wednesday morning, hello. Uh, Long Dog says, well, that's a fantastic contribution, Tony. I agree. Tony, uh, Bobby Warren, Tony Warren. Wow, where did I get that? I guess just because I just had Tony on the mind, right? Bobby Warren <coughs> says, hello, Doug, hello, Ken. Alice says, who the heck is Tim Stout? We don't need another Stout around here. More Tims? That'd be okay. 
we have two Tims in the community currently, Tim Cruz and Tim, um, 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 uh oh, I'm in trouble. Sowell, <laughs> Stowell, Tim Stowell, right? Black Serendipity. I know what that's like. GW has these spells too. <laughs> Just saying. <clears throat> um, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, I am Tim. All right, I'll go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and remove that comment. I do not appreciate comments like that. Greg M., I had 80 minutes chat with five different Amazon reps yesterday. It'll ta it takes a lot out of you mentally to have to endure that to get a simple answer to the second or second rep should be able to go first or second. I bet that's what that was intended to be. Yes. Oh, man. I, 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 I resist calling any tech support or rep so much because, yes, it's frustrating. I try to find some other way to resolve whatever the issue is. People saying hellos to each other. Darren Gilholm, hello. The more Tim's, the better from William. Long dog, Doug, that was very broad. That was a very broad interpretation of taking full moon pictures. I just wasn't seeing the possibilities in the wording as you did. Clever interpretation, and it made me laugh. Yeah, I that was I for Doug to say that. That was a little bit on the edge. That was a little bit on the edge for Doug to say. All right, I have some things to go respond to. Questions that abound. This is a chat room comments that I copied and pasted after I because after the, yesterday's live stream ended, I wasn't up to date with chat. So I went back and read more. And Alice said, uh, gave the answer about the trouble that she was having. And I didn't catch that during the show saying updates were slow to come or not at all. So uh, yeah, I've come across that problem with Windows 10 computers. I've, I've come across computers that I wound up eventually wipe and reload to fix the update problem. I've had times when I've replaced a network card and that fixed the update problems. I've had times when I manually downloaded an update and installed it I, and that fixed it. I've had times when I installed the optional updates and that fixed an automatic update not working. Now with the comment about updates were slow to come, I've also had times when I'm doing updates and it seems to be taking a long time, so I'll open uh, Task Manager with control shift escape we gotta drag it over to the right screen so you guys can see it and i'll watch these numbers to be sure something is happening and i'll typically sort by the cpu column and see that windows is up, updates is up here and i'm wanting to see numbers changing as long as numbers are changing that tells me it's still working on it and i have have had many times where i just let it go let but walk away leave the machine for a few hours come back and find that it's done or it's further along. Some months, the updates will take longer than others. Some months, you might update one computer and it goes pretty quickly and you might update your other computer and it takes longer. Well, that other computer has other hardware equipment and it might need other components of that update. Or there may be other explanations why that other computer is going slow. So updates are far from consistent in how long they take. And when you say they're slow to come, I, I, when somebody complains that it's, the update took a long time, I want to know how long is that? Sometimes people say, it took 20 minutes, my gosh. Nah, that's okay. That's not a thing to be concerned about. And then even it took two hours. Nah, maybe that's something to be concerned about. Look a little bit more at what's your internet speed. What else is going on with the computer? What else are you doing on the internet on your, on your computer? Do you have some cloud storages that are updating in the background? Lots of, lots of complications. We can go into that further, Alice, if you give us more detail based upon what I'm saying here. Uh, oh, Wintermute explained the 64-bit implementation that we use these days was created by AMD. That's why the... Windows Update Catalog has AMD 64 on every update when you're doing the x86. Thanks for that explanation. I did not know that. Yesterday's update whacked my Bing wallpaper from Long Dog. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna not do the rest of these right now because there's a couple other 
uh, issues. I might come back to these or might save the rest of these for another day. Let's see, what else? Is there anything else? No. All of that, all the rest of that is pretty much on the same topic or similar topics. <clears throat> I want to come up here to Tim Stowell. Tim Stowell. Tim Stout. Tim, Tim Stout. Stout. All right, move on, Doug. <laughs> He says, I have a new question in the management team again. He's in the management team again at his office, at his company. Now I have three emails, three email accounts. Is there a way to customize that for each one in Outlook email for the Daily Show? Yes, there is. And we're going to do that. Now I got to explain how the, you see there's no timestamps here. Here's what Tim said. How many times have I shown you guys this? Here's the email address, the same questions for me to respond to during Windows Daily Show. How many times have I told you to send those questions by text? Not even once. He sent these by text, which means I had to go on my cell phone and copy it from the text, paste it into an email on my phone, go back to text, copy it, paste it in an email, go back to text, copy it, paste it in an email, send it to myself by email, and then flag it for today. You know what, on the Ken Stout live show tonight, what might happen? Tim Sal is regular showing up there. I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering if Ken Stowell <laughs> will, get, will put Tim Sal into the waiting room as a hand slap for sending a question by text. Normally, I only use Ken Stout as the butt of my jokes. That was a little bit using Tim, Tim Sal. Sorry, Tim. I just couldn't resist that. But please send questions by email, not by text. Do you mean there's a way to customize signature for each three of the email addresses? That, well, that was my reply text to him. Yeah, that would be cool. I personally make my ma mail my regular business email. And now I work my work email. Can you customize it for each one? And then he gave a typo correction. <clears throat> so, yes, we can do that. I'll come over here to Baby Beast and bring up Outlook and give a demonstration of that. I had to do a little bit of setup, a little bit of preparation for this. I have my Doug at DougBets.com email account here. When I collapse it, then I see I can show you that I have my other email account, the one that you guys should use because your emails will be seen sooner if you use this DougBets at LiveWindowsTraining.com. So I have them both set up in Outlook. So now if I go to do an new email, look at automatically put in my signature for, <clears throat> for this email address. All I have to do is switch this from and choose my other email address, and it will choose, choose the signature line for that email account. But look, there's nothing there. Why is there nothing there? Because I've got to come up here to signature and go to signatures. And here it shows the email account, Doug at DougBets.com. Here's two different signatures that I have for Doug at DougBets.com. Now, if I switch up here to my other email address that's configured in Outlook, I can create a new signature and say that this is for what? Live Windows Training, that's the email address. I guess that would make sense that I should be using this email address. So that's the name of the signature. And then down here, I would say uh, Doug or at least one of the Dougs, um, you won't ever know which one. And then sign off as Doug. <clears throat> now, is that going to be for new messages or replies? Or I can set it up for both. So I'm going to say it's for new messages. And I'm going to say it's for replies and forwards. And then click OK. So now if I close this new email, do you want to save your changes? I don't want to save the changes for that email. I hope that saved the changes for the signature. I think it did. And then come up here and choose. Um, let's see. Oh, I got to choose. See, I can't, I can't select the, other, the signature for the other email account here. I have to change the from address. When I change the from address, then I get to see the signatures that are available for that address. But I said that I want that to come up by default, so it is there. So that should be the answer to Tim Stowell's question here. <clears throat> All right.
Now, come back and see what, 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 what else did I have here? Was there any other questions? That, no. So I'll go to chat. I, well, let's see. Let me check first and see if I have any uh, bookmarks for today. I don't think I do. No. All right. Then come back to chat. Speedy C, hello, Bobby Warren. I got a new job. I'm a customer service representative at Spectrum for the Spectrum Mobile Service. Wow, okay. Congratulations, Greg M. I had to download one of the July Patch Tuesday updates and disabled Nod32 antivirus on one computer at a customer's location. They have horrible speed internet. I have done, actually, I have downloaded patches from my internet and taking it to a client's office when I know it's going to take a really long time to install an update. Alice says, I think it might be Kaspersky making updates slow. That could be because it's looking at everything that comes through. You could temporarily disable Kaspersky when you want to do the updates. And let's see, Greg M. Yeah, so she's saying disable Nod32 antivirus. Oh, right, saying that antivirus is the maybe the issue could be since they run on low level uh kaspersky has known issues i stopped using that years ago yeah i don't use any third party antiviruses for this exact reason and others mainly because anytime microsoft does an update then the antivirus products have to fix whatever that might have broken for them they may or may not know it ahead of time and there's, oh, there's a whole bunch of other factors for, now, I'm not saying this for, for anyone who likes and wants to use a particular antivirus. I never try to argue them out of that. Because if I try to argue them out of that, then they go with Windows Defender and they get a virus later, then they come back on me. So that's clearly a CYA um, action on my part. And no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you what CYA means because that's not a Doug thing to do. At least not live streaming. Uh, Seldom Ball, installation of the Windows malicious software removal tool often takes a very long time. It was included in last month's update on my system. Alice, what do you recommend instead? Nick Poverman, I guess that's in regards to antivirus. I, I'm, again, Windows Defender all the way, all of my own computers as well. Nick Poverman recommends Malwarebytes, the paid version, and, and the Windows-included software. Malwarebytes is typically in addition to Windows Defender, I, I believe. Alice is going to take a look at that. Kerry Holzman has a discount if you go to use his YouTube page. That's right, he does. Thanks, Nick. It's worth a look. Tim Sowell says, thanks, Doug. You are welcome. And I hope you won't be mad at me about picking on you a little bit. <laughs> Um, where am I headed here? Oh, here's a, a new question came in. These two I talked about yesterday, and I haven't sent them a reply yet, giving them a tame, time stamp from yesterday, I think. Did I talk? No, I talked about this one. Oh, that's three days ago. Uh, surface A, macrame flag. Oh, yeah, we did talk about that. There's just no question there. Tim Sanborn, I recognize that name that has come in before. I'm going to click on that channel, see if it reminds me. Uh, yeah, Tim, when he shows up in chat, he shows up as Tim Sanborn. Um, get back here. The reason I point that out is comments on videos will show up with your channel URL, not the user-friendly name that shows up in the chat room. Oh, and that's another thing. Tim Sal asked about how do I change? It, because his shows up with his other name. Let, let me, I, I know Tim Sal's not going to mind. Let me go take a little detour here. Tim Sal. If I go over here to Tim Sal's channel, go to channel. When he makes comments you know, on videos, it shows up as Mr. Moonwalker 27 Tim. And he made a comment along with some other question that he sent about he needs to get figure out how to get rid of that. That's easy to do. So you come to your channel, go to uh, YouTube Studio, not your channel. Go to YouTube Studio, and then go to 
I always forget, is it customization or settings? I think it's settings. That's why I'm going to click on customization first. Why did you do that, Doug? Um, no, here it is. It is on customization, then basic info, and then handle. This is your handle. When Tim comes to this place, he's going to see Moonwalker Tim shows up here. You can change this, and that's going to change the handle for your, your channel, and your comments on videos will then show whatever you've typed in here. Uh, there's a limit. To, oh, here, handles can be changed twice every 14 days. I wish they'd make that a longer amount of time because this just makes it too easy for trolls to change their names. Handles are a way for you to find and connect with creators on YouTube. Handles are unique short handle identifiers distinct from channel names. They start with the at symbol. And that's when it, in the chat room, you're used to doing at symbol and then the friendly name that is showing. And you can click to say hi to somebody or to Tim Sal will see himself in orange like I see myself in orange. But in uh, comments, you get the other one. Now, the, that URL um, thing here, the handle, that is also a way to go to your channel is any of you can do this. You're going to go to youtube.com forward slash and then put in your handle, LWTDB in my case. And I have the forward slash live there. It automatically shows up because I go to that so often. And that'll take you right to the channel. And you should be able to do that for anyone's channel. Now, the way that they say you're supposed to do that, there's some extra, I don't remember what it was, some, ex, some extra something or other they already you put in there. I don't remember what that is. Um, I should be able to see that, though, by going to, I come up here and go to your channel. No, it doesn't show up there. There's some other way that they have a that, that you're supposed to use for that. Now, there's a bunch more conversation there. Where was, oh, there's the discount YouTube page. Thanks. Rand Israel, claim your aspirin. What does that mean? Oh, CYA. That's what CYA stands for. Claim your aspirin. Okay. I got it. Nice one, Rand. Yeah, I need to get back to what I was trying to do after I was so rudely interrupted by some random Doug that wanted to go talk about something else. Tim Sanborn. I have a warranty. Now, he's a, he's, a, he's putting in this comment off of this video about the HP all-in-one computer. Let's zoom in on this. I have a warranty on my HP all-in-one and I need to send it in to be repaired, but I would like to know what is going on with it or have an idea. So the other week it was running fine and I went to church and came back home. My HP all-in-one was no longer powered on. I turned it back on and the backlight lit up for maybe 15 seconds and shut back off. I tried moving it to another power outlet, same thing. I found a third outlet and had it plugged in. And it worked for maybe an hour and then powered back off. And I was having the same issue with it powering on for 15 seconds and then dying. I read it might be something on the motherboard. Can anyone offer insight on this problem? I'll make some comments about it, then I'll go to chat and see what they have to say. Um, <clears throat> first thing, you have the HP warranty, so you're going to hang on. I guess your problem just really choked me up there, Tim. Oh, we got this is another Tim, another Tim on the channel. How about that? <clears throat> yeah, so you got the HP warranty. And at this point, I would just I would just send it in. Because what you're describing is is rare in my experience, but my reaction to that, my first thought was, is it overheating? And then I discounted that because after I'd been off for quite a while, you turn it on and within 15 seconds, it turned off. And then another time it stayed on for a while. So that sounds like a piece of hardware going bad. It could simply be the power supply. 
Now on the HP all-in-ones, you have an AC adapter, so you have a power brick. It could be that it's just that power brick. So it's quite possible when you send them the computer without the power brick, they might send it back to you and hey, say, hey, there's nothing wrong with this computer. And they don't, maybe don't, don't even suggest that it might be your power brick. So what you could do is buy a replacement power brick before sending it in if you want to you know, take that approach. That means you're spending money. You could claim that you have a bad power brick, but you can't prove it. So maybe you'd be able to send that power brick in for re warranty replacement. More than likely, they would just, if you, if you claim you have a bad power brick, they would just send you one and not need an exchange. So that might be a simpler way to get this issue resolved. Now, it could be a component on the, on the motherboard or any component in the computer that is randomly, after some random period of time, causing a problem that triggers a, a shutdown. A component on the motherboard, yeah, likely, but at this point, we don't have any way to prove it unless you're going to open it up and start taking electrical measurements on the motherboard. And there's no sense in doing that just for the purpose of having an idea what the problem might be before you send it in. I don't think you should send in the power brick with the computer. They typically tell you not to do that. If you send the power brick with the computer, they might send the computer back to you without the power brick. So I, I would be interested in pursuing that a warranty replacement of the power brick first or just see about ordering a replacement on Amazon or is there somebody else within your world <laughs> that has that similar model computer that would have the same model power brick. Check the output voltage and output amperage before you plug it into your computer. Just because the plug fit, fits into your computer, that does not mean that power brick is safe to use. You need to be sure it has the same output voltage and output amperage. <clears throat> now let's go see if chat has any other comments on that. Um, whereabouts was I on here? Down here, claim your aspirin. Let's uh, zoom in here. Tim got a laugh. CPU fan might be clogged or died. Yes. <clears throat> no. Hang on. My thoughts originally turned to that too. The thing that I uh, took me off of that is that a uh, subsequent, well, one time, 15 seconds, did he say? Or how, what was his timing on that? Yeah, 15 seconds. Backlight lit up for 15 seconds and then back off. And then another time, it stayed on for an hour. Um, so that, that kind of drew me away from an overheating issue. But... If the house was, you know, like 10 degrees warmer on the occasion when it only lasted 15 seconds, and the time that it lasted an hour, hour, hour and a half, does it matter? Power back on, 15 seconds, and maybe an hour. All right. I would send the whole PC. It's under warranty. Uh, save for my concern about the power brick. They may find nothing wrong with it. Jeff to Nick, I've been using Kaspersky for years, never had any signs of slowing down or anything, at least compared to McAfee Norton. Boot to BIOS, see if it gives a CPU temp. There's a good idea. Thank you, Jim. So when you st start the computer up, maybe somebody can remind me what the BIOS key is for HP computers. I think if you just press the escape key, rapid fire the escape key while the computer's starting up, you'll get the pause menu, and you can choose BIOS from there. So go into BIOS setup and see if it has temperature readings in there. That's an outstanding idea. Still could be CPU fan intermittent maybe. Yes, a good, good point there. The CPU fan sometimes running, sometimes not. So I think we don't have any other suggestions for you there. 
uh, Tim Sanborn, let us know what happened, please. I will send him a reply to this uh, um, comment with a timestamp in the to the point in the video where we started talking about that. I do not have any redirects set up. And before I forget again, I don't think I said said this at the beginning of the video. No videos for me tomorrow. Well, I'm not going to be live streaming tomorrow. I might watch a video tomorrow. I won't be live streaming tomorrow. After this show is over this morning, I'm going up to the cabin. Next week, I will not be taking a day off. Where do I? Oh, we've got 30 minutes. I don't have any redirect set up, but I think I'm ready to go ahead and shut this down. Put this show to bed. Oh, wait a minute. No, nope, I'm going to go do one more thing. One more thing. Let's go back and look at these other chat comments so I don't have to queue them up for another day. So, let's see. Long dog. Yesterday's update whacked my Bing wallpaper. So if you're talking about the Bing wallpaper that's down, this is what the Bing wallpaper is down here at the bottom in the notification area. So is that icon still there? Can you click on it? Can you wake up the wallpaper again? Maybe you'll need to reinstall it. Put me back to the default wallpaper. Oh, so you would probably have to go into right click on the desktop, go to uh, personalize, and this is background. And um, you know, I'm going the wrong way again. No, no, no. That's well on Windows 10, you don't get to choose Windows Spotlight from here. Windows 11, you can choose Windows Spotlight from here. That's why on Windows 10, we have to have this Bing wallpaper installed. On Windows 11, you don't have to have the Bing wallpaper installed. So I don't know which one Lawn Dog is using. Maybe he's already got that issue solved. Is he telling us anything here about it? Get over here. Nope, nothing there. Oh, let's say other comments here. John Williams, buy a new HP PowerBrick from Amazon because you can return it in the first 30 days for free. Excellent. Excellent comment. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to actually paste that into my reply because I don't know if Tim will watch the video through to the end. Alice says, enjoy your day off. Thank you. Kerry said yesterday, if you have a system running fine on Windows 10, that it would not make sense to upgrade right now. He only installs Windows 11 and Windows 10. Okay, so I have a little bit different answer for that. I am updating some of my computers occasionally to Windows 11 when I think that user is going to be okay with it because I want my client's offices to get some awareness that Windows 11 is coming. Now, Carrie has, Carrie has said several times, many times, show me something on Windows 11 that is worth going to. Well, I do. I have an example of one, and I think I've come across a few others, but this is just one that's on my mind right now. There's this one little feature that some people out there really, really got to have it. I want this. I want this. I want this. And actually, Ken Stout might be one of them. So to to show that, and some of you are just going to say, "Ugh, oh, no, no, that's no biggie. But for people who care about this, th they... They would like this. So I'm going to switch over to Baby Beast because it has Windows 11. And just that you can float. Well, I, I got to check first and see what other programs I have open first. Let's see. That's okay. That's okay. This one is okay uh, because you're going to see my other windows. Let's um, put this somewhere else. That's That's fine. Okay, so here, somebody out there just has to want this feature. You move your mouse up to this, the middle button of all these, and you can pick a four quadrant setup for uh, windows that you have open. So it's taken this one to the bottom left, and you can click on the other ones that you want to have in other windows and very quickly and easily set up a four quadrant system. Now there are additional tools that you can install on your computer to do that on Windows 10, but Windows 10 natively will not do four windows or four quadrants 
that easily. So for the three people out there somewhere in the world who must have that, who that fits their workflow, that is a reason for them to go to Windows 11. Just saying, there are some reasons, not a lot. The biggest one for me is that eventually we're gonna to have to be there. So I don't wanna do them all during the last three months before the deadline. John Williams says, on my Windows 10 Pro computer, started up fine, but no taskbar icons. Oh, yeah, we talked about that and about him rebooting. And he says he rebooted three times and it's working. Seems like we got something here to fix. This is the second time this has happened. I'm going to have to replace the NVMe drive. Hope it helps. The one on my PC is a Team NVMe. I'm going to install a Win uh, Western Digital SSD. I will let you know when I get the new drive in the mail. Did you try checking Windows software for controlling icons? I'm sure, I'm sure you have done that. Yes, I did. Also did a few other tests to see if the drive is failing. Team, the team drive is 512 gigabyte. The new drive is one terabyte. Hope this solved the problem. Well, you're throwing darts at the wall here. You're throwing mud at the wall. See what sticks. You could be a little more intelligent about, about approaching it unless you just want to upgrade the drive anyway. Uh, Lawn Dog to John, if you catch Doug asking him the proper usage of DISM and scan now function, I can post something maybe I shouldn't. And John Williams says, but I think it's not appropriate. Not, not true, John, it's totally appropriate. That's a totally appropriate question to ask. Before replacing the drive, what I would have what I would have done and recommended you do, and you might have already done this. You didn't say what you've done. But just because it's useful for uh for people to know is do um, oh, crystal disk info. And I've demonstrated this recently a couple of times on, on, and on uh, one time where we actually did catch a real problem. And that was on um, uh, uh, Tim's, Tim Tech show, um, Tim Cruz. I think, or, oh, crystal disk would be in the C's, not in the S's. Crystal disk info. And if you've got a drive going bad, you absolutely should be able to see something in here, um, as far as I know. Is now you I might say good and my temp temperature might show okay. That doesn't mean it's okay. You got to go look at these detail numbers. Any line that has a value, spin up time, that's that's normal. It's showing how long it takes a drive to spin up. Now that's a spinning drive. I have, I think he was an, yeah, he was an SSD, right? So anything that has numbers, composite temperature, that's okay. Available spares, fine. Numbers, you look at anything that has numbers in it. Uh, data read, that's okay. Data written, that's okay. Host read comments, host read comments. So all of these that are showing with numbers are are okay. Unsafe shutdowns is even okay because that's not due to the drive. Media and data integrity errors. If you have any numbers showing here, then that tells you that that drive is going bad. Doesn't mean it's the cause of the problem that you're experiencing, but it does mean that it's going bad. And then here's another criti critical warning. What options, what items are showing on your drive depends upon the configuration of your drive and what it reports to Crystal Disk Info. Because all of this is information reported to Crystal Disk Info by the drive. Crystal Disk Info does no testing whatsoever. It's not a testing tool. It's just showing you what the drive is reporting. Even though the Smart Info says that it's good, it can still have numbers here indicate that it's on its way out. Um, seems like there's some other things I wanted to say about that. On dog running Windows 10, when I say get whacked, it's not running, being it's not active, like it got turned off, this is happening before, reinstalling being fixes the problem. I wonder, can you just go launch it? Bing, if you go down here to the bees, Bing wallpaper, could you just launch it from here to, to wake it up instead of reinstalling? Yes, I wish I had a choice in personalization. I don't see one. It's nice to know that it could be in Windows 11. It is in Windows 11. Uh, it is becoming slow from Alice to Lawn Dog. Lawn Dog to Alice. There's no slowness in my computer if that's what you're hunting about. 
Sometimes during Microsoft updates, the settings you personally put into Windows gets changed, goes back to default. Particularly if you had a boot failure, if your computer ever experienced a, a, an improper shutdown, it might have restored from a system restore point or from a registry backup. And that's what might have lost your Bing wallpaper. If you had installed the Bing wallpaper recently, and anything happened that caused your computer to do an automatic repair, it might not display a message on the screen saying that it was repairing. Uh, that could be what happened. Something like this, I suspect what's happened with the major update that I did the other day, and again, this is somewhat common, has happened to me personally, specifically with Bing wallpaper. Speedy C, I use that four quad windows layout to display your Fortnite stream with Dennis Doug. Oh, wonderful, we have somebody here that is using the four quad Layout, are you doing that with Windows 11? Are you using that method of putting the four panels together or are you just pushing and shoving them around? Lawn dog, I tried to launch it, Doug, meaning being wallpaper from Windows menu didn't turn on, which I thought was weird. Is there a repair option there? If we go over here to, now here I'll click on A so I can go straight to the Bs, not that it was far to go from to the Bs, but just showing that you can do that. If you right click here, is there a repair option? No, nope. no repair option. And I'm guessing that Bing Wallpaper is an app, not a program, meaning Windows key R and then appwiz.cpl. I'm going to guess Bing Wallpaper is not in here. Oh, it is. So here, no, nope. all you got here is uninstall. There's no repair. NVIDIA Control lets me select how many windows I want on my monitors from the drum control. Okay, yeah, so that's a third party and that's not integrated into Windows, but that's easy for you to do because you already have NVIDIA control. By the way, as long as we're speaking about NVIDIA, I'll give you one more thing. Um, Big Beast is doing better in terms of blue screens because I went, I went down the road to check for driver update so the first thing I checked on was my graphics card I was sure that it had to be up up to date because I remember getting prompts for installing updates and I went and found it was not up to date and I went and found that the software for automatic updates for my graphics card was not installed but what what was installed was there was another Nvidia something or other here Nvidia settings I think it was there I think there's two Nvidia things now in here and I had been thinking that the one that I had was automatically checking for updates, but it wasn't because the one I had was simply the the thing that controls settings about it and does not do updates. So if I go to NVIDIA settings, I think this one only does settings and does not do updates. Yeah, I think it's this one. It doesn't do updates. So there's another one that does updates that I installed and now I'm questioning, is it still running? But anyway, I installed some updates and it seemed to be more stable after that. But then you know that I recently had a crash when I tried to go to Task View. So yesterday I did test that. I did a private live stream and I went to Task View and it did not crash. So I decided, well, on some other day when I can remember it, at the end of a live stream, perhaps the end of a Windows Daily live stream, if I can remember when that time comes, I will try to do that task view right at the end of the stream and see if it crashes the computer because the stream will be at the end. So I'm asking you in the chat room to remind me someday when I'm close to the end of a Windows Daily stream, remind me to test task view to see if it crashes the computer. Anyone? Bueller? Alice says, I will try to remind you. Hint. Hint. Selden Ball says, reminder. <laughs> All right, such a dug. Here's my email address. If you want to send me a question for me to respond to during a Windows Daily show rather than a text, <clears throat> you can use that address. And here I go. Have a great day, everybody. No show tomorrow on either channel. Oh, Randy Israel says, ask what's her name over here to remind me.
So here I go clicking. Well, I, I got to show you when I'm clicking this, right? Otherwise, you're not going to know what happened. So here, task view. And I think it's going to actually work. So now I can demonstrate task view. And what I want to show you is with Windows 10, task view not only shows your uh, tasks open and lets you change to a different uh, desktop. But if you scroll down, see the scroll bar? goes all the way back to July 3rd. It'll show previous things that you've done. Now, let's see. You can only view or store activity history from this device. Syncing activities across other devices are no longer available. Oh, that's right. It used to be. It used to be that I could go into task view and I could see my history from my other devices that are signed into my Microsoft account. So if I go down here earlier today, and I, I didn't pre-check these to be sure that these are safe. But anyway, I can scroll down and down and down. Now, it doesn't show everything that I did. I'm sure I did on July 30th. I did more than those two picture images. So I never did understand exactly what it shows. But that's a cool thing about Task View, but I have never used it for any useful purpose myself. Well, I, I think maybe I did once or twice that I went to find something that I did at the, in the past. That looks like my colors are off again or wrong again. All right, Doug, get out of here. Click the button. Get, go, go. Just end it. Just end it. Just say goodbye. Go. Leave.